Okay, it looks like it's working. Hang tight. Madam Chair, we're live. I'd like to call the meeting to order. This is a regular meeting of the Baldwin Park Planning Commission. The date is March 27, 2024, and the time is 7.06 p.m. Commissioner Pena, could you please lead us in the flag salute? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, Planning Secretary, if I can please get roll. Thank you. Um, Chair Escobosa. Here. Vice Chair Pena. Present. Commissioner Maciel. Here. Commissioner Rodriguez. Here. And Commissioner Gonzalez. Present. Thank you. I now declare oral communications open. Anyone wishing to address the commission on anything other than the items listed on the agenda may come to the podium. Thank you. We have one speaker who's left a comment card. Uh, Susan Cole, please come to the lectern. Good evening. Thank you, planning commissioners, and peace be with you. My name is Susan Cole. I own a house at 14419 East California Avenue uh, in Baldwin Park. Up on the north side, we're just, California is just south of Joan Bridge Street. In December, my neighbors and I received a notice that someone wanted to build a large soccer complex behind our homes on Joan Bridge in the industrial zone. So we contacted the city and we got the staff report, um, that, which was the same staff report you received for the December 13th meeting. We uh, quickly submitted comments about the draft initial study. We didn't have much time. Uh, but when we attended the, that meeting, we realized at that time that the meeting was going to be continued. It was continued to a date uncertain. So in the meantime, um, we continued to send notes and comments to you on the staff report, which you had received, on the conditions of approval that you had received, on the final initial study and the negative um, deck, mitigated neg negative deck, and on the site plan. So when a public hearing was again scheduled on February 14th um, and again continued, I realized at that time that the planning department staff had not forwarded to you the majority of our public comments. So here uh, I have officially brought you our comments. There's a binder for each one of you and one for the staff, though they've already seen them. Um, they're all regarding the soccer pro complex that being, is being proposed for 14412 and 14424 Joan Bridge Street. So they're now officially part of the administrative record and for this application and as such, they can be referred to by the Planning Commission for questions, further study and your deliberations. We're delivering them to you now in person so that you will have sufficient time to understand the concerns of the residents who live on California, the concerns of the residents who live on Baldwin, because the overflow traffic will even stretch that far, the residents that live on Main Street and the businesses on Joan Bridge. We wouldn't want you to not have the time to, to look at this. So thank you for your time. And um, if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else which, wishing to speak on items not listed on tonight's agenda? Seeing no further interest, I will now declare oral communications closed. Is there anyone else that wishes to address the commission? Um, the loan item on the consent calendar is the minute meetings from the previous planning commission. Is there any commissioner that would like to pull up this item for discussion? All right. If no items are being pulled up, can I get a motion to approve the minutes for February 28th, 2024 on the consent calendar? I motion. 
I'll second it. Can I please get roll? Yes. Chair Escobosa. Yes. Vice Chair Pena. Yes. Commissioner Maciel. Yes. Commissioner Rodriguez. Yes. Commissioner Gonzalez. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. All right, and so now we are moving into the public hearing. The first case on the agenda is a conditional use permit to allow for a tire installation facility within an existing multi-tenant commercial building located within the general commercial C2 zone at 13916 Ramona Boulevard, suite number two, pursuant to table 153 of the Baldwin Park Municipal Code. <laughs> Baldwin Park Municipal Code, My apologies. Um, I was going to call you up for a report, but you're all ready. Yep. yep. Thank, thank you, uh, Chair Escobosa, our assistant planner, uh, Jesus Estor Rodrigo. So we'll be giving our presentation this evening. Thank you so much. Uh, good evening, Honorable Chair and members of the Commission. Next slide. Before you is conditional use permit CP24 03 to allow for a tire installation facility within an existing retail building located in the C2 general commercial zone. Next slide, please. The subject property is located east of Breezy Street and south of Ramona Boulevard at 13916 Ramona Boulevard at unit number two. The subject site is approximately 0 0.47 acres in lot area. The property is currently improved with one three unit retail building wherein the applicant is intending to occupy the centermost unit of the building shown on the current slide as the red box within the proper within the map. Surrounding the property are similar automobile related uses and retail buildings and located directly south of the property are existing single family homes. Next slide please. The applicant, Michael Gamboa Jr. for Goodnight Tire Service, Inc., is proposing to use the existing 1,465 square foot tenant space as a tire installation facility. Shown on the current slide is the existing site plan for the property. There are no exterior alterations or changes being proposed to the existing retail building or the property as a part of this application. Staff would like to bring to the Commission's attention that the applicant intends to limit all services provided uh, to be uh, done within the existing unit and no installation or storage of discarded tires will take place along the driveway aisles of the property. Next slide, please. Shown on the current slide is the expanded floor plan of the existing unit. Currently, the applicant is not proposing to make any interior modifications to the floor plan of the tenant space. However, the applicant has noted in their justification statement enclosed with your staff reports that they do intend to install one mechanical lift in the future if needed. Next slide, please. Shown on the current slide are photographs that uh, show the interior space of the existing unit. Next slide. The current site slide shows the on-site photographs taken by the applicant. As previously mentioned, there are no proposed additions or alterations to the exterior of the existing retail building. Based on these statements provided in the applicant's operation plan enclosed as attachment number three of this item's agenda packet, conditions of approval have been included in the enclosed resolution that limit the installation of tires and all other services provided to take place wholly within the existing unit. Additional conditions have also been placed to, to limit uh, all garage doors to be closed in the evening hours of operation of the business to limit uh, potential noise impacts to surrounding properties, as well as to prohibit the outdoor storage of products within the subject property. Property. Next slide. A notice of public hearing was published in the local newspaper on March 14th, 2024. Additional public notices were also mailed to property owners and occupants that live within 300 feet of the project site on that same date. To date, staff have received one written public comment from a neighboring property owner objecting to the proposed application. This written public comment has been provided to the commission for their records. No other verbal or written public comment was received. With respect to the project's review under the California Environmental Quality Act, or CEQA, the project is categorically exempt for further environmental review as it falls under the category of projects noted in Section 15332, Class 32, referred to as infill development of the CEQA guidelines. A notice of exemption for this project will be filed with the Los Angeles County Clerk's Office. Next slide, please. 
In conclusion, staff does recommend that the Planning Commission approve Resolution PC24-03, approving CP24-03. Both planning staff and the project applicant are available for any questions regarding the project. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions of staff by the commission? Uh, I had one question uh, from one of the slides in the pictures of the, I don't know if we can go back to it. I think it was the one, the one that had the four pictures. Oh uh, yes, the site photographs. Yes. I just wanted to I'd, clarify something. Slide number I seven, think, please. Yes, slide number, uh, that one, the other one. <laughs> that one. <laughs> um, so uh, picture number four to the right, um, where the red vehicle is, is that part of the, what the applicant is proposing? Is that part of it? Of no, the that's a, if you go to the site plan, which would be on slide number four. So that's just just outside the boundaries of the project site okay. uh, located to the to the east okay. there's a there's a neighboring multi-tenant commercial shopping center and that's the view uh, to the east of the property okay okay got it thank you so much mm -hmm. i have a question um i'm very familiar with that i'm gonna call it a shopping center um that's where i take my dog to get groomed in that corner unit but Parking is extremely limited there. I, I think maybe 20 parking spots. It's a very small parking lot. Um, there's already existing businesses in there. And so I, I'm interested to learn if any plans to manage traffic, uh, what would to manage the potential overflow into the street would look like. Okay. Um, so to start off, the site does comply with the minimum parking requirements for that type of business as far as the unit's concerned. Um, but in addition to that, the uh, operator is aware as far as the congestion of parking spaces and the way they intend to operate is by appointment only. Um, so they do intend to limit how many clients visit the site um, to ensure that there's enough parking spaces for the other businesses within the space. Thank you. So I, I do have kind of a piggyback question on that. So I know we've received a couple uh, material last minute, uh, especially from the other item as well. So I've just been trying to catch up reading on everything. But mm -hmm. going back just to to the handwritten note that, that we received, so I'm still sort of just trying to process that. Um, I think they had addressed, uh, which the chair had touched upon with just sort of parking uh, within the shopping center. My understanding that based off of just really quickly scanning this this letter, is that there, there's an accident waiting to happen. So my understanding is that I think some of the customers or folks, uh, stakeholders related just to that parking or to that, to that structure or to that the shopping center, um, I think believe that they're also sort of blocking some part of the street either on Ramona Parkway. Um, and then there's again, just additional congestion. So I understand that one idea just to target, to, to address um, the park, so the parking is by appointment, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure that still addresses perhaps just maybe a, again, not yes. my words, their words, a wait, a accident waiting to happen. Yes. Can we go back to slide number three? Be the one before that. There we go. So the project site is noted if you can see on the, on the presentation in mm -hmm. the blue outline. Uh -huh. And the property that the commenter is inquiring about is actually the corner property off of Ramona and Breezy. So okay. that's where the commenter expressed their concerns as far as uh, existing uh, traffic conditions or over parking into the street. For this site, we don't anticipate that that uh, issue would come up because they have parking on site um, and they don't have uh, street parking off Breezy. Um, and considering that they're doing their operations by appointment only, um, for this specific business, we don't anticipate there being uh, overflow into Breezy or Ramona. Okay. Um, in, in the hopefully unlikely event that this 35-year-old, uh, I'm sorry, th resident of 35 uh, years in that location ends up kind of um, seeing that there's sort of an overflow of congestion, my assumption is that they can just contact code enforcement and they would 
look into it, right? Yes, it'd okay. be a, a mix of code enforcement and parking enforcement, specifically for the corner business. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. Of course. Any other questions from the commission? All right. If there's no questions of staff, I'm, I will now declare the public hearing open. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to test? Sorry, before we begin the, um, or as we um, open the public hearing, we were going to go down the line and just disclose any ex party communications that any members of the commission might have um, had before the public hearing. As a reminder, if, if you don't, if you never communicated with anybody or you never received um, any material outside of what's on the record, you can just say there's nothing to report. Nothing to report. Nothing to report. I have nothing to report. Nothing to report. Nothing to report. Thank you. Thank you. Um, once again, if there's anyone in the audience wishing to testify on this matter, either for or against, this is your opportunity to speak up. Thank you, Chair. And then I would like to note that the applicant is joining the meeting via Zoom, so they can also uh, speak to uh, the item as well. Thank you. Um, seeing as there's no interest from the audience, would the applicant like to say anything? Michael, are you there? One moment. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. I, I just wanted to say uh, thanks for taking the time to look over this application. It means a lot to me and my business. And um, if you have any questions for me, I'd be happy to answer them for you right now. I, I have one question, Mr. Gamboa. Yeah. Yes. Uh, in in the in the case of people, uh, you're saying everything's by appointment. Will you have any walk-ins, or will you be accepting walk-ins? Um, walk-ins, I I won't ever close the doors to people. So if someone wants to walk in and ask questions, they're more than welcome to. However, um, typically when I was in La Puente, my schedule is full for the day. So if someone, let's say, walks in on Monday and says, um, I'm going to wait for you to have time to help me on Monday and they want to wait in the parking lot. Typically, the answer to that is, well, let's let's make an appointment for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and come back at that specific time. But again, uh, not turning anyone away, but um, that's typically how it works. Okay. Thank you. No further questions. Um, I also had an additional question for you, um, Mr. Gamboa. How many appointments do you intend to, or do you project to have um, per day? Because I know for operating hours, I believe it was until 9 p.m. Um, Correct. Um, I anticipate somewhere between four to five customers per day. Um, it's just myself, and it typically takes me like anywhere from one to two hours to help a person. So when I was working in La Puente, that was roughly like four to five customers. Thank you. All right, seeing no further interest, I will now declare public hearing closed. Can I get a motion for this project, please? I can motion for the project. I'll motion. I'll second it. Can I please get a roll call? Chair Escobosa. Yes. Vice Chair Pena. Yes. Commissioner Maciel. Yes. Commissioner Rodriguez. Yes. Commissioner Gonzalez. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. The commission has voted to approve the proposed project is exempt from environmental review under the California Environmental Quality Act, known as CEQA and the state CEQA guidelines. Specifically, the project is categorically exempt from CEQA guideline 15332 since the project is categorized as an infill development and meets the general plan for designation and applicable zoning designation and regulations. Um, in doing so, we have voted to adopt the resolution PC 2403 approving CP 2403, a resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of Baldwin Park, 
approving a conditional use permit for a tire repair and installation facility within an enclosed multi-tenant commercial building located within the general commercial C2 zone pursuant to table 153 of the city's municipal code. All right, the second case on the agenda is a zoning text amendment to repeal and replace subchapter 153.170 pertaining to sign regulations in the city of Baldwin Park to include new language regarding new statistic or digital billboard construction and billboard relocation agreements, incorporation of previously approved sign regulations that were not codified and reorganized of the chapter as a whole. Can I please get a presentation? Yes, thank you. Unfortunately, uh, we will not be able to present this item tonight. There was a last minute change uh, from, from staff and we will have this ready in short order. Uh, the next meeting that we uh, will, we are going to continue this to a date certain for the April 24th meeting. All right. Can I please get a motion to continue this project to a date certain of April 24th, 2024? I'll motion to... Um Extend till what date again? April. April twenty fourth. So oh, April twenty fourth. And I'll second. Can I please get a roll call? Chair Escobosa. Yes. Vice Chair Pena. Yes. Commissioner Maciel. Yes. Commissioner Rodriguez. Yes. And Commissioner Gonzalez. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Um, and just to clarify for anyone who may be listening, the commission has voted to um, move this item to April twenty fourth agenda. Um, the third case on the agenda is tentative parcel map to consolidate five lots vacated street right of way in the city parking lot into one 92,680 square foot lot in the development of the Zocalo Civic Plaza project. The site consists of a zoning designation of a mixed use one within the development transit oriented development specific plan 2016 located in downtown Baldwin Park at the northwest intersection of Maine and Pacific and extends south of Main Street. Can I please get a report? Thank you. I, I, oh, there we go, IT. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, Honorable Chair and uh, members of the Commission. Next slide, please. Uh, before you is attended a parcel map uh, request to co consolidate five lots and vehicle right away to create one lot for open space purposes, uh, open space and commercial purposes. The, the project was originally scheduled for the June 27, 2023 Planning Commission meeting, but was continued. It was scheduled again for the November 8th and, uh, meeting and the, also the February 14th, 2024 meeting. And each time it was continued, uh, and the need to continue was to analyze information that was received from a commenting party. Next slide. The project is located at the Northwest intersection of Main Avenue and Pacific Avenue and extends south of Main Street into downtown Baldwin Park. The current zoning of the property is downtown core, but the zoning that was in place at the time the project was approved was mixed use per the 2016 downtown TOD specific plan. The site is bounded by commercial businesses and mixed use businesses that front on to Ramona Boulevard to the north, uh, commercial businesses and a single family residence to the southwest, a church and a commercial business to the south, and City Hall to the east. Next slide, please. The site is the location for the proposed Susan Rubio Zocalo Park and Civic Center Plaza project, a walkable plaza and new passive park with, with public art, decorative lighting, pavilion, retail building, city monument signs, parking and driveways, and a water conservation features. A small commercial building of approximately 3,250 square feet is proposed along the plaza's frontage on Sterling Way. The building is envisioned to be divided into two or three units, leased to businesses engaged in food sales or other commercial activities compatible with the plaza use. The project, is, uh, pr the project consists of four redevelopment agency successor lots, shown in pink on the, on the slide, and a city-owned lot uh, shown in blue on the slide. It will also incorporate city-owned parking lot and right-of-way along Pacific Avenue and a county-owned easement surrounding the Baldwin Park Unified School District-owned parcel, 
though the though the Baldwin Park Unified School District parcel itself will be excluded from the lot cons consolidation. In order to accommodate construction of the improvements for the project, the five previously mentioned lots that comprise the site must be consolidated. The parcel map will also vacate and abandon certain uh, excess rights of way that is no longer needed for the project. Consolidation will facilitate the construction of the project improvements without having to worry about building code separations requirements from the lot lines. I would like to acknowledge a typo uh, in the staff report pertaining to Table A. The intent of the table was to show which pieces of the property were involved in the subdivision. Uh, in that table, you'll find in your staff reports, there's uh, uh, record number one, which is uh, assessor's parcel number 8553-011-900. That's owned by Baldwin Park Unified School District. And the size of that piece is 1,954. That was intended, there's a typo that should have been removed since that is not gonna be part of this lot consolidation. And uh, what should have been included instead was uh, was vacated street uh, that is main 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 street from Sterling Way to Pacific Avenue, and, and that size of that piece is uh, 62,734. So that was a typo. I just wanted to bring that to the Planning Commission's attention. Next slide, please. Oh, yes. Also important uh, to note here is that uh, while it was off the table, all this information was correctly displayed in the tentative map, and it was described uh, more fully accurately in the staff report. Next slide. Oh, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> State law re requires that for tentative parcel maps to be approved, six findings must be made. The first finding states that the subdivision must be consistent with the applicable general plan and specific plans. The project has a general plan land use of mixed use, and the project is consistent with, this, with, the, with the plan because open space and commercial uses are permitted within this land use designation. Furthermore, uh, three land use policies and one open space policies are are cited in the staff report that show that the general plan supports the use of the property as proposed by the project. Next is uh, this, the, the, this project is also consistent with a 2016 specific plan in, and that was in place at the time the project was approved as well as the 2022 specific plan that came afterward. The 2016 specific plan listed the uh, land use designation for the project as mixed use and there was a specific provision in the plan for a civic plaza. The 2022 specific plan changed the land use designation for the site to downtown core, which also, which allows for a variety of uses, including open space and commercial. And therefore the project is consistent given that these are the uses proposed for the project. The second finding states that the, that the site is physically suitable for the type of development. The site has a flat topography and lends itself to the development in general and, and could support a civic plaza use. Also, there's ample access to the site given that access from Pacific Avenue to the, to the east, Sterling Way to the west, and Main to the south. The third finding states that the design of the proposed subdivision or the proposed subdivision improvements are unlikely to cause substantial damage or substantially uh, and unavoidably injure fish and wildlife in their habitat. There's no fish and wildlife habitat on the project site. Next slide, please. Oh, I, oh sorry, yeah, there we go. Uh, the fourth finding states that the design of the subdivision type, uh, uh, so, uh, sorry, the fourth finding states that the design of the subdivision or type of improvements are unlikely to cause serious public health problems. The site is currently developed with parking lots and street right of way, both of which facilitate uh, automotive vehicle traffic. Subdivision supports the development of the site as a civic plaza. 
which facilitates public gathering for pedestrians. And this is more supportive of public health than vehicle uh, transportation facilities. The fifth finding states that the design of the subdivision or the type of improvements will not conflict with easements acquired by the public at large for access through or use of the property within the subdivision, within the proposed subdivision. There are no existing easements within the project area that were acquired by the public at large that would adversely affect the, uh, that would be adversely affected by the project. A portion of the city right away will be closed for the creation of the plaza. But vehicular access between Sterling Way and Pacific Avenue will continue via an alley connection at the northern part of the project site. Furthermore, a traffic study was undertaken in 2022, and, it, and the study determined that the closure of the right of way uh, necessary for the development of the, pro, of the site for the, for the Civic Plaza would not have an adverse effect on traffic and circulation in the area. It should be noted that there are no existing private lots adjacent to the project site that will lose access to the street as a result of this subdivision. The sixth and final finding states that discharge of waste from the proposed subdivision into the existing community sewer system would result in a violation of the existing requirements prescribed by the California Regional Quality Control Board pursuant to Division 7 of the Water Code. Sewer waste discharge from this project will be minimal given the development type proposed and will be in accordance with the city, state, and sanitation district regulations. Next slide, please. The development proposed has already been analyzed uh, by the EIR prepared by the 2016 TOD specific plan EIR. Staff recommends that no further environmental review be required because none of the conditions in public resources code section 21166 and or state CEQA guidelines section 15162, which are shown on this slide, is triggered by the approval of the tenant parcel map. Furthermore, the traffic study prepared for this project uh, was prepared by a consultant that specialized in traffic traffic engineering and confirms that the project would have no significant traffic and parking impacts outside the purview of the EIR and addendum. I would like to advise the Planning Commission that an opposition letter was received earlier today uh, regarding this project. This letter was placed in the dais uh, before the meeting started and this was for your review. A staff has reviewed this letter and is confident that this, the staff report addresses all the issues raised in this letter. Next slide, please. In conclusion, staff recommends that the Planning Commission find that, the, find that pursuant to public, public resources code section 21166 and state CEQA guidelines section 15162, the project was analyzed by the 2016 TOD specific plan EIR and addendum to the 2016 TOD specific plan EIR as well as the transportation assessment that was prepared for the project and that no further environmental review was necessary. And approve resolution PC 23-26, approving tenant of parcel map A4199 to consolidate five lots, vacated street right of way and a city parking lot into one 92,680 square foot lot for the development of the Zocalo Civic Plaza project located at the northwest intersection of Main Avenue and Pacific Avenue and extending south of Main Street. Thank you. This concludes my presentation and I'm available for any questions you might have. Thank you for that. Um, are there any questions of the commission to staff? I just have a quick question. Um, so we're still held to do a decision today on the project, even though we just received today the the new um, like new information. Yes, that is correct. The decision is before you to make uh, this evening. 
Correct. You can review now. Is it just to be clear, the commission is not on a timer. So you have the, the, the time and opportunity to review this now if you'd like. Yeah. Uh, one of the concerns that I do have is that I did um, uh, participate in listening on one of the planning, uh, not a, one of the regular council meetings in which there was uh, a few issues that were brought up by a couple of the tenants on that north side of Ramona. Um, and my whole concern is, have those been addressed and taken care of? I'm, I'm not clear which, which tenants and which issues those were. Um, I, I remember just off the top of my head, the, the bicycle one was one of the issues. Um, King Taco was another, but they weren't an issue. But there was another one towards the corner, if I'm not mistaken, where property lines and uh, and that, what do you call it, easement was an issue. My concern is, has that been resolved before moving forward with this? Yeah, uh, Commissioner Marcel, if you don't mind, I'd yeah. like to answer your question. Yes, so we've engaged with uh, the gentleman on the corner and we have executed an agreement uh, with him for the temporary construction. And so we're not going to be uh, affecting his property. We, we actually went back and redesigned around his property. And he was um, happy with that. As, as a quick reminder to the commission, um, questions are certainly welcomed. But you are ultimately bound on the record that's before you today, the staff report, any statements made during the public hearing, and any communications you have here. And so um, conversations had at a previous council meeting are not necessarily part of the administrative record on, on what you can base okay. your decision off of. Okay. Noted. I'd like to make a motion to take a 10 minute recess Certainly. and read the document that we had received yes. a few moments ago, and then we can just reconvene after. I'll okay. second that. Thank you. We don't need to do a roll for that. Okay. I'll reset. You can call okay. Reset. Okay.
Stand by, Madam Chair. I'll go live again. Madam Chair, we're live. Thank you. The Planning Commission is now back in session. Um, we left off asking the commission if there were any questions that they had on this project to staff. So I want to open that up again. Um, so just a couple of questions to staff. Um, so I'm well aware of what we're being asked to make a decision today. And again, I, I'm obviously well aware that it had been postponed to a date uncertain, obviously just uh, pending the further research and obviously ongoing um, litigation to, to some extent, if I can, if I can call it that. Um, I, obviously the parcel map, uh, you know, again, th again, thanks for that presentation. Um, again, this might be coming from sort of a non-city planner kind of point of view, at least again, as sort of a community uh, resident here, but wouldn't have, you know, the consol consolidation, wouldn't that have happened prior to construction? Um, or is that, I guess that's my first question. Good evening. Good, ev good evening, Commissioner sensitive microphone um you're loud and clearer yeah i i will take a first stab at that question and then if sam has anything else to add on to that I'll, I'll defer to sam um the statutes that kind of govern consolidation don't short answers they don't set a timeline on when this has to happen um i think sam probably has some more practical reasons for why it happening this way right so uh, there was there were several external factors that led to the um, uh, uh, I guess the process to be done so so normally yes it would be done before a construction project starts but how the project aligned and the external factors uh, that affected the construction start um, we plan and the goal and the vision was to uh, do them in tandem so do them at the same time and I think uh, once we started putting together the the map and, and submitted it and then it was held back several times so I think the first time that this went to the council was sometime last year yes. and so it, it's something that should have been done already by now but we understand why it's being uh, postponed but yeah the plan was uh, as Alex mentioned um, there is no timeline but the plan was to do them uh, at the same time Thank you. Um, so, okay, so we, I understand it was supposed to be done in tandem, but again, I understand that there's just no timeline. Um, and then my follow-up question is that, I guess, is sort of the same response for, again, the request to vacate the right-of-way as well, of why that wasn't. Yeah, it's, it's the same thing. There's no timeline for, in the statute for when, for when that has to happen. Okay. Um, and then I guess just sort of the third question, I realize this might be sort of a little bit more um, subjective, um, so just, just uh, bear, bear with me. But as far as, you know, um, you know obviously we did receive some um, from, from June um, uh, co correspondence and opposition since June of last year, and I'm sure there was other as well, other time periods as well. Um, but I think when I was just reading this, you know, throughout the week, you know, what kind of sort of um, strikes me is that it's sort of some language that was included about, you know, I think just taking the Asher's property or something like that. I believe that's just the, the, the name of the, the uh, uh, property owners, but are we technically for, from the city's point of view, are we taking any property? The city's point of view is that we're only using city owned property. Okay. Are there any other questions from the commission? All right. Um, I'll come back to you guys <laughs> at a later time. Thank you. No, not at this moment.
Checking in with my fellow commissioners. Any other questions? Uh, I just wanted to clarify, like I know in the report, um, the findings were that the project is exempt from CEQA. Um, and then the, um, the correspondence we received is saying that it's not. Um, where or where do you why do you think that they believe that or or where they're they're getting their findings from so i'll speak from the city's perspective i won't try and guess kind of the motivations behind the other side um the city's perspective is that uh the Environmental impacts of the park project were studied as part of the 2016 downtown EIR. Uh, and then the 2022 downtown specific plan just had an addendum. Um, and so it's the city attorney's office position that it's still it's still exempt from CEQA. Thank you. And I, I could point the commission to page 133 of the agenda. And that discusses the city's position on the CEQA exemption. And one more time before I open public hearing. Mic off. Sorry. Um, the one thing I wanted to look at is where the traffic mitigation report can be found on this uh, staff report. Yes. Thank you. Any further questions? One last question I have for council is what um, what impact will this have um, in regards to our decision making today? For the record, um, Commissioner Maciel is referring to the correspondence dated March 27, 2023. 
And can I ask, what do you mean by what impact it will have? Well, upon reading it, I, I feel like <laughs> this letter is really putting us on the spot. Uh, uh, it's um, bothersome to even be classified as liars um, for voting on this when I see that every, everything has, has been done according to its due diligence. Um, I can so my, my thing is, how is this impacting us? I can speak to that. Um, ultimately, your decision makers for the city and each of you is tasked with reviewing the evidence before you. And so your decisions are, um, are determined on whether you, you believe the evidence that's before you. And this is cer certainly one piece of evidence. So is the staff report. So are the statements made by staff and then the statements that you're going to hear from any opposition or um, opponents of the project as well. So the law allows you to make that decision. Um, you not as a crime, but as your duty, whether you want to vote for or against this is, is up to you for you to make. That's why you were appointed here to look at the evidence before you and then make that decision. So please ask these questions and, and review the record. Um, and if you feel like the evidence sways you any one way or not at all and you want to continue it. You, there's no, um, it's your decision to make. <clears throat> I don't have any additional questions. No. Commissioners Gonzalez and Maciel, any further questions? Not at this time. Not at this time. Thank you. All right. Um, if there are no further questions to staff, I will now declare the public hearing open. If there is anyone in the audience. I'm sorry, really quick, just before we begin the comment, we're going to do the disclosures again of any third party communications. None reported. None to report. Nothing to report. Nothing to report. Nothing to report. Yeah. Um, all right. So now we will open public hearing. And if there's anyone in the audience wishing to testify for or against this item, um, please come up to the podium at this time. Please state your name. And there will be a three minute time limit. Good evening. My name is Brian English. I'm with the law firm of Alan Matkins and here on behalf of the Asher family. Um, I had some notes prepared, but I think it'd probably be easier to just address some of the comments that you guys um, brought up. The first is the date that this project was approved. So the city is saying February 2022 is when they approved the project. That's based solely on that's the date they hired an architect. There is no project designs, no plans, just a conceptual idea. The reason that they are saying that February 22, 2022 is the date this was approved because it's completely inconsistent with the current downtown specific plan. The plans for this project were not completed until October 2022. At that point, the downtown specific, the current downtown specific plan was already in place. Even if you took them at their word that February, February 2022 was the date this was approved, the traffic study that they gave you was not delivered until August 2022. And in order to um, bypass the CEQA requirement that you keep Main Avenue open, you needed to have a traffic study that allowed that. So they approved the project in February 2022. They didn't follow CEQA because they hadn't conducted a traffic study at that time. Uh, the last point would be the closure of Main Avenue. The staff reports vacillate between calling it closed or vacated. And it has not been vacated, and it's certainly not closed. It's demolished. You can't take away this construction fencing and drive on it tomorrow. You cannot just demolish a public street without following proper vacation laws. They can't go to your house and demolish the street in front of it and leave it that way for over a year without following proper protocols. So our protest here is that, one, this is not consistent with the current downtown specific plan street was illegally demolished is never been vacated and they're asking you to do a post hoc vacation for them um, because there's ongoing litigation and the last point is even if you think this was approved in february 2022 
they did not do a traffic study before approving it that said they could close down Main Avenue. End of the comments. And we're going to take a one minute recess to allow Commissioner Scabosa to um, step out and use the restroom. Mark, are we live? Yes, we're live. Thank you. My apologies for that. Um, we, the commission is back in session. Um, once again, are, if there are any other, if there are any other members of the audience who would like to speak for or against this project, now is your opportunity to do so. Um, if there is no further interest from the audience, I would like to give the applicant the opportunity to come and speak to the commission for three minutes. Great, so I have a few questions for the applicant. Um, forgive me, the, um, or what's the, the opposition. I uh, forgive me for mistaking you as the applicant. <laughs> um, so just first of all, I recognize that this is a very serious matter. Um, and again, I just thank you uh, for, for just submitting as much material uh, as, as you, uh, you're, the uh, law firm as as they could. Um, I guess I'll be asking just sort of the same couple of sort of questions that I had asked to sort of staff just to hear sort of um, a different perspective. Um, but I will also ask is, I, I understand there's sort of this litigation, but this litigation is occurring because the business um, or pro property is, I, I, do you just elaborate about how this is being impacted, or at least the reason behind this? I'll yeah, so, so there's two facets of it. One, it's there, there's a, a they're, they're bringing a writ for the public. So essentially, it's, it's, that's due to the, what, what we consider the illegal closure of Main mm -hmm. Avenue. Again, it, it's our position, and, and I think the law supports it, that you cannot just demolish a street first before vacating it. And vacate a street, but it, it needs to be there 
before you remove it from the public mm -hmm. um, access. The second component of it is the inverse condemnation component. So um, there, there was a portion in front of our client's um, property that had originally been condemned for the expansion of Main Avenue at the corner of Pacific Avenue. So when that was condemned, that kept um, the public right of way. They, they, they maintained their access and proximity to the public right of way because that strip was always designated for future road expansion. It was the road was never expanded, but they kept a um, a public parking lot with driveways leading out to the street. So they maintained it's it's called the butters rights. When you're a property owner and you adjoin a public right of way, you have a butters rights to that street. This project has destroyed all of that, essentially landlocking their property, leaving Correct. Like yeah. no driveways, and it's it's a medical office building, so they have no way to ingress or egress their property. Okay. And I understand that there is another entrance on, is it, I'm forgive me, Pacific, right, but is that only for the car wash or is that? It is, the car wash is a separate defined assessor's parcel. So okay. um, yes, technically, if you, you can go through that separate property and get onto the medical office building, but again, it's, they're separate properties. They're, it's not one combined lot. Okay. And then again, there's just no from Sterling or anything on, on the, right. it's, as you said, it's land absolutely okay. no access to that. Property. So specifically you're talking about when, I guess, when one of just sort of the letters that it was just sort of taken the property, or at least so part, I should say part of the property uh, for, for the purposes of the SoCal. And I understand that there's also, you know, it doesn't qualify under the specific plan, et cetera, that, that type of project, but specifically, um, <laughs> that, I guess, piece of land, for lack of a better term, that, that was taken from, from, from the city, um, that, again, is, is, was part of the parcel, or again, was that more of, can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Yeah, absolutely, I understand what you're asking. So no, Thank that you. was not part of a, they, they did not own that. That, at one time, was part of the property, um, but they, they did not own that. That was the public space. But the analogy I would use is, you have a house or wherever you live, you have a driver that goes out to the street if the street's gone and you cannot get in or out that's a property right has been taken from mm -hmm. you so so the inverse claim is not that physically their property has been taken it's that one of their property rights that's guaranteed under the constitution has been taken because it's a it's a landlocked parcel now yeah thank you so much for that <coughs> excuse me explanation um and then just kind of just to sort of add on on kind of just sort of the impact of just sort of that park um, you know, hypothetically speaking, and I'm not speaking on behalf of how everyone's going to be voting today, but let's just say it ends up being constructed either way. Um, and how, how will this impact your, your client um, pretty much with this new park? How, how that impact um, specifically, not necessarily, again, the uh, land was taken or a piece of property or a piece of the rights, I guess, part of rights were, were taken away, but more how will this impact your client or at least specifically the business? Sure, so it, it makes the property essentially useless if you can't get in or out. And, you know, it, for the time being as well, the, the fencing has completely restricted access. So um, it, it's, it's almost fatal to the sustainability of the business um, at that site. Okay. And then, as far as access just to the again current access right now just to to that that uh, medical office again um are patients or clients going through the neighboring property the, the which is the car wash right through through that entryway and then um has the car wash addressed you know top you know talk to to the to i guess the property owners or, or you know the tenants of that it's the same family that owns both of okay them. so while there's not a, a dispute among the property owners sure by the law you still cannot even if you say well the property you can get here from the property next to you that's not how the law works it has to, it's mm -hmm. it's you have to look at the property as it's it's on an island it's sure. its own property and again it's um same property owners but two different parcels correct that's correct yeah. and i should say it's it's technically it's the same family, it's, oh, it's two different sure. members of the family, so it's not the same, it's not, they don't have unity of ownership, 
but it's all within the same family. Great, thank you. Um, I, I don't have any additional questions to, to suppose the folks op opposing. Thank you so much. You're welcome. The one thing I need clarification on, where is the Asher's property that they're uh, speaking about on this map? Because none of this spe specifies that for me. We have the exact address. And the address. The address is 14402 Pacific Avenue. Thank you. Um, so, again, checking to see if there's anybody in the audience wishing to speak for or against this matter. <coughs> if there is no further interest, um, I would like to give the applicant any opportunity, an opportunity for three minutes to speak and share with us anything that they would like us to know. Sorry. At this time, staff is going to stand by our staff report. We believe that the the answers that uh, to these to these questions are already in the staff report, but we are available for any questions that you might have. I have a clarifying uh, question. Um, so, for the proposed uh, project, there's not going to be a way for cars to enter, like before there was a you know. Um, a, driveway or like not, not to say driveway but ability for them to for cars to cross from the street and so they won't that will be blocked there won't be any ability for cars to go through that street anymore correct are you referring to the portion of main avenue between pacific and sterling uh yes the one that's closed off right now yes There will be a connection made. Uh, so, uh, as part of the project, there'll be a, a drivable connection between the between Sterling and Pacific. It's going to be an alley uh, on the northern part of the site. Okay, so cars will be able to go through there then. That's correct. So it won't impact then the business, the opposite, the opposing business, um, because or like the customers who are going through like that medical center, they'll be able to cross through still. So the alley that's being proposed for the project is on the northern part of the site. So um, the uh, uh, opposing party here, their, pro their project is on the south part of the site. Oh, okay, got it. Thank you. One last question to staff. That uh, driveway that we were talking about, the alleyway, it's a one-way street, right? That's correct. Um, so just a couple more clarifi clarifying, excuse me, clarifying questions, especially now that we have a little bit more, uh, I guess, verbal context uh, or 
context is verbally communicated by the opposing party. So I, I, I guess, and I, I don't mean to sound as crit critical or, or, or what have you, but my, I, I, again, I understand that this was going to be done in parallel <clears throat> with just the starting of the construction. Again, I believe that was by the city council. Um, but now we're sort of here present day, at least when all, all of this was proposed, was this property sort of taking into consideration that to some extent it might have been landlocked? Again, I recognize that you can still enter through one of the other um, on Pacific, but, um, you know, was wasn't this taken into consideration about how this property might be, you know, impacted? This was probably through access, you know, from the point of view of access or through parking as well. So I'll let staff comment on if if this particular property was what might have been done to take it into consideration. Say the city's position is, is that this property was always landlocked and it wasn't this project that made it so because it was bounded by city property. Uh, the opponent made the assertion that, you know, it's similar to if you own a house and uh, the street in front of your house is demolished. We would argue that's not so. Um, when you own a house that directly abuts the street, you have those rights. The opponent's property does not directly abut the street. It directly abuts other public property, and it's that other public property that directly abuts the street. So, sorry, and sorry to interrupt, but that public property is that the, the public property that you're discussing is that is the, the actual street, correct? No, no there's it, it was it was a parking lot. It was a, I see. It was a city-owned public parking lot. So that's why from the city's view, we're only using city property. And my assumption, again, this is an assumption, my assumption is that when the individual or uh, opposing party purchased that property, uh, my assumption was that that would have been disclosed at one point throughout the transaction. Again, I'm, I know I'm making a huge assumption here, but. So I don't know when that property was purchased by this particular property owner. I would also point out that when that property was purchased is not what's directly before the council. What's directly before, I'm sorry, the commission. Mm -hmm. What's directly before the commission sure. is this particular um, tentative parcel. I don't know. The city wasn't involved in that transaction, so. Sure. Um, and then the, the, I guess the question that I wanted to ask earlier, but again, wanted just additional context was, um, again, if, if somehow just sort of the count, uh, sorry, the commission, uh, decides not to approve it, um, again, what are sort of the implications from kind of the city's perspective? If the city, if the commission does not approve the tentative parcel map. Correct. It's very difficult to sure. quantify what would happen, but it would definitely involve the city going back to a redesign and uh, reinvestment. I have, a, I have a clarifying question, just using both of the examples that I've heard from the applicant and from the opposition. And because in the correspondence, it even makes mention that the city is using to build a park rather than housing. But if, if what I'm hearing is, as an example, if the city had decided to build housing on that parcel, then the opposition is going to be in the same position. They're going to be in the same situation where they are, they're essentially landlocked, no matter what happens with that piece of property. Is that what I'm hearing? 
potentially the, it would depend on what a future project look like. But I guess my clarifying to my point, because and definitely correct me if I misheard, but you're saying that the this the opposition is not landlocked. I, I forgot the word they use an ab abutment um, because the abutment belongs to. So sorry, the opposition never had the abutment to the street. It was that parcel that belongs to the city that has the abutment. Okay. I don't know if my question, I, I have clarification on what I was trying to ask. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I also have additional clarification just for myself, but based off of, you know, what, what the chair was also asking. So, and again, I'm just trying to, if we can I'm gonna try to just do this by memory. I'll try to look at the map right now. Um, but again, ba based off of just the additional information that we just received right now from, from staff, is that, again, there's the property, then there's city property, and then that city property is a parking lot, and that parking lot, or it used to be a parking lot, and then now that's kind of the connection, again, the blanking out on the, the driveway out into the road, pretty much. Is, is that right? Okay. Yeah, you, yes, you described it correctly. All right, so checking in with my fellow commissioners, are there any further questions of the applicant? Um, all right. And I get a motion for this project. It was a public. Uh, my, my apologies. Other. Okay. All right. Thank you. So my apologies. We're going to close public hearing and then we are going to go into deliberation. Or. Um. So if the council, I mean, the co commission wants to discuss amongst itself how it wants to handle this or even take more time to look at the record, mm -hmm. as a reminder, Exhibit K, so a little a little backtrack, um, we've continued this project, uh, and so we've received input before from the property owner, and the city has responded. And so I'm just going to highlight where uh, the opposition is in the record and where the city's response is. So Exhibit K found on page 309 is the city's um, legal response to all of the points raised in the previous correspondences. And you can find those previous correspondences as exhibits J and I, which are on page 296 and page 289. Question: um, If we chose to deliberate, that would be public deliberation, or that would be you would be you would be deliberating here okay. today in front of everybody. Okay. Would we need a motion to deliberate? Okay. You could talk amongst yourself. If one of you sees something that you want to highlight for the rest of the commission, you can do that. share that talk to them about what you were so i just wanted to share i did google maps of course, yeah. the property and that helped me to visually understand a little bit more about what was going on i just know sometimes the maps are a little difficult to read Um, the question was, what is a preliminary injunction? A preliminary injunction is when, before um, a matter is resolved, you get the court to stop that um, activity from happening. Well, let me ask my commissioners, is there any deliberation that you all want to engage in? 
Are there further questions? Yeah, I'll just kind of mention that again, you know, even just sort of the reports or at least uh, communication, I should say that we did receive in June of last year and even in, in March, um, or today, actually, forgive me, to today, um, you know, again, despite a little bit of the rhetoric that that, that was incorporated in there, I, I do think that they do make really uh, good points. Um, but, you know, my assumption is, and again, it's just an assumption is that, you know, again, the opposing party would have known that it was sort of landlocked. Um, and again, I, I recognize I am making an assumption here, um, but I feel like in any sort of real estate transaction that that's, again, this is just coming from my own personal experience, that that would have been just sort of disclosed or at least discussed when purchasing the, the property. Um, but I still think, you know, kind of what still strikes me is that, you know, we're still here present day sort of, you know, the construction's happening. Um, but at the same time, you know, there's this sort of this ongoing litigation that I feel maybe probably would have been, you know, a, a, at least sort of the, this main issue probably would have been addressed prior to, to, to construction. Um, so I think that's just, you know, I'll just kind of, again, thinking out loud of kind of just what I'm thinking and and um, obviously feeling um, you know looking at kind of just sort of the benefit of actually you know obviously the pro of of, of approving this would obviously be moving forward with just um, construction and so forth and you know looking at just sort of the greater impact to to not only the residents but also just to to our communities as well so I, I just do do see it also from just sort of that that uh, um, perspective, but again, just sort of that distinction between just sort of being uh, sort of landlocked, uh, you know, one version of the definition of being landlocked and the other version of, you know, perhaps not being landlocked or at least being aware that that they were being uh, landlocked. I, I mean, I think that's certainly um, kind of what's helping me in, in making a decision uh, for, for, for this. So I think that's all I have. At least I'll oh, leave it up just to the rest of my fellow commissioners for any any thoughts as well as we make this really really important decision as well um I don't know if I can say this, but um, while I don't particularly um, or are in favor of the proposed project, I do know that my job is to view the facts. And if staff has thoroughly um, reviewed everything and um, it's, it's, if it follows the law, then that's what I'm going to make my decision off of. Certainly, and I just want to um, remind you all that the Planning Commission makes the recommendation to the City Council. And so ultimately, the City Council is going to make the final decision in all of this. And so that's what your role is. You view the evidence, you view the record before you, and then um, if it is appealed to the City Council, um, then the final decision, if it is appealed, the final decision would be made there. So once again, just checking in if there's any further deliberation or questions. All right, seeing none, uh, is there a motion for this project? I'll make the motion to adopt resolution PC uh, 2326, approving TPM 84199. And I'll second. Thank you. Can I please get a roll?
sorry, I just want to make a clarification just to make it clear what everyone's voting on tonight. So this resolution is for the adoption uh, and approval of of the of this project and it will only it's and it will and there will be final unless appealed to the city council so the, it will not go to the planning uh city council unless it's uh, appealed can i get a roll call chair escobosa yes vice chair pena yes commissioner maciel i abstain Commissioner Rodriguez? Yes. Commissioner Gonzalez? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. The Planning Commission has voted to find that per CEQA California Environmental Quality Act and the state CEQA guidelines, the project was analyzed by the 2016 uh, TOD Downtown Specific Plan EIR and addendum to the 2016 TOD Downtown Specific Plan EIR, as well as the transportation assessment that was prepared for the project that, and that no further environmental review is necessary. We also voted to adopt resol resolution PC 2326 approving TPM 84199, a resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of Baldwin Park approving a tentative parcel map to consolidate five lots, vacated street right of way, and a city parking lot into one 92,680 square foot lot for the development of the Socalo Civic Plaza project located at the northwest intersection of Main Avenue and Pacific Avenue and extends south of Main Street. All right. Ch Chair, if I may. I'd like to add and enter into the record that this decision that, you, uh, that the city uh, the planning commission has made is final unless appealed within 10 days. Thank you. Okay. Moving right along with the agenda. Are there any non-public hearing items? Do we have any reports of officers? The only report I'll, I'll make tonight is that we will have a planning commission meeting on April 10th. Thank you. Are there any communications from the commission or from staff? Yeah, I had a quick question to, to the staff. Um, so during public communications, um, there was a, a, a concerns community member that had submitted previously um, communication just to, or emails and communication just to the uh, uh, the planning commission. I understand that, and I believe I, I recall from memory that we had uh, re we were about to review their um, <laughs> that 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 agenda item, but I know it was postponed for I believe it was a date uncertain. Was that I, I again? Was that the communication that they had provided, or at least the pub comment? Had that been emailed to us, or at least provided to us already, or was the staff holding on to? share that with us until we were actually going to be reviewing that, that agenda item. So the speaker earlier today was uh, Ms. Cole, mm -hmm. and she was the party who emailed you directly. So okay. that, that is one and the same person. Um, this, this project that uh, she was speaking about has not, gone, has not come, come before sure. you. Um, it has not been presented. A staff report has not been presented to you. And... Um, and uh, I would I would like to consult the city attorney to to see if it's appropriate to pass out the material she's dropped off today, considering that sure. um, this hearing has not been open. I would actually recommend that we um, follow our established policy on this, and which is you receive all communications that we've received regarding the project up to the point that the agenda is published with the staff report when the agenda is published. So those comments that you're going to receive are going to be part of the um, administrative record that you're going to receive when you get the agenda. Um, and we'll make sure to include all of that. And if you'd like the physical copy to have with you at the meeting, you're, you're able to do that. But the material that you're going to receive is going to be posted with the agenda. 
Sure. So I guess in layman's term, the trigger is that it, once there's actually a staff report that's published, that's when we um, publicly publish, I should say, then that's when we actually get all public communication regarding that matter. Unless the item is going to be continued, in which case we're going to save the comments for the public hearing. Continued, and that means to a difference meeting, correct? Yes. All right, great. Thank you so much for that clarification. So um, on that subject, though, and like we've said before in the meetings, when the agenda comes out, um, it's best practice for you as commissioners to, to take your time, review the agenda, review the staff reports, the attachments to the staff reports, um, so that when you come to the meeting, uh, you know, you have an understanding of, of the record before you. Absolutely. If there are no further comments, I will accept a, mo a motion for adjournment. Um, before, Chair, if I may, um, I feel like we didn't, add, we didn't uh, respond to Ms. Uh, Cole while she was up there. And I just, on my behalf, I'd just like to say that we will be looking at all their concerns as a community because it is our job as commissioners to address whatever concerns are made to us. Uh, so just for the record, just to let her know that we will be reviewing once we received all uh, resources that she has provided. That's and, all. And how that would work when you review her comments, if for whatever reason you do contact anybody in the community or you go out into, into the community, you would disclose that when we do our disclosures when we open the public hearing. So instead of saying no report, you would say, I talked to this person at this house and they told me this. Can I get a motion to adjourn? I'll motion to adjourn. And I'll second. Can I please get roll? Chair Escobosa. Yes. Vice Chair Pena. Yes. Commissioner Masayel. Yes. Commissioner Rodriguez. Yes. Commissioner Gonzalez. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. We are officially adjourned at 8.49 p.m. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mark.